Hi, my name is Mike Vermeule and I'm the engineering manager of the Open64 compiler team. Uh, myself, Roy, and Michael will be uh, telling you a little bit about Open64 and also answering some of the questions that we've gotten uh, from Developer Inside Track. So uh, to start with, actually, the first question is, well, what is Open64? Um, Open64 is a compiler suite. It's got C, C++, and Fortran compilers. Uh, these compilers are set up to uh, have a pretty advanced set of optimizations and uh, it actually runs on a number of different architectures and uh, gets sort of high performance code on those, on those uh, architectures. Um, Open64 actually started as the MIPS Pro compiler, so it was a proprietary compiler set uh, created by SGI and SGI released these compilers, uh, actually relicensed them in 2000 under the uh, GNU public license, the GPL. And after that point, a number of uh, university researchers and a number of other companies actually picked up um, these compilers. They continue to add improvements and enhancements and sort of advance it forward as a set of technology. Uh, AMD actually also joined this community in 2008, picking up the Open64 compilers. And uh, our work initially has been on uh, using the compilers, improving, and particularly getting high performance on uh, AMD platforms, sort of being able to exploit the hardware platforms for Shanghai, Barcelona, Istanbul, um, and newer platforms as well. Roy, can you tell us um, what do you do here at AMD and how long have you been with AMD? Okay, so my name is Roy Chu. I'm currently an AMD fellow. I've been working on compiler optimizations for over 20 years and I've been with the AMD for over three years. And currently I'm an architect in the Open64 compiler team. So the Open64 compiler, can you describe any of the unique features that are in that compiler? Okay. So Open64 has many state-of-the-art compiler technologies, but we have a big focus on compiler optimizations to reduce memory bandwidth consumption. We group such optimizations under the new dash NSO option, which stands for multi-core scalability optimization. How, do, uh, how does the memory bandwidth issue arise? So memory bus is often a performance bottleneck in particular in many data server uh, applications. This problem is particularly pronounced in a multi-core processor where some resources such as L3 cache, memory bus, DRAM controllers are shared among multiple cores within a processor. Okay, so and, and how does an application incur a memory bandwidth issue more than just needing a lot of data? So when an application needs the data, you go through the memory subsystem to get it. So the quantity of the data that gets fetched in each time is a fix. So it could be a page and it could be a cache line. So if you use only a small fraction of data that you fetch in and you are wasting you know, some memory bandwidth on the data that you don't really need. So when the memory traffic is light, it's probably no big deal. However, in a multi-core system, many applications run at the same time among different cores then they all file off the requests of data to send memory subsystem. And this is like rush hours on a highway and the traffic is jammed. So what can a compiler do to address this problem? Okay, dealing with a memory bandwidth has been traditionally seen as a platform issue and it's beyond compiler's control. However, the OpenC4 compilers has taken up the challenges. It performs a number of aggressive loop optimizations data layout optimizations to improve the data locality. And we use the data got fetched in as many times as possible before they are replaced. Or we put frequently used data next to each other so that more data are used within a fetch quantity. And this is like carpooling on the highway. We don't build more lanes on the highway, but we squeeze more people into the car to reduce the number of cars on the highway. 
Interesting. Okay, so how come these aren't uh, op optimizations aren't widely available in other compilers? Well, in some cases, while these optimizations can reduce uh, memory bandwidth consumption, they could potentially lead to the execution of a larger number of instructions as well. And when you run a single application on a multiple system, where the bandwidth is not a performance bottleneck, such optimizations might actually slow down the program. And this is like taking a step you know, beyond carpooling to take a bus. But bus you know, makes stops, and passengers going in and out of bus you know, take extra time. So in all optimizations, that means you shuffle data around or rearrange them, which could lead to the overhead during executions. And most compilers have focused on the traditional single thread performance and not addressing per platform performance issues. Therefore, they don't pay enough attention to this kind of optimization. Okay. And, and so how does Open64 avoid these uh, potential slowdown problems of, of the bus analogy? Okay, to avoid possibly slowing down programs <coughs> during live traffic, we group this optimization under the dash MSO option so that the user can decide you know, whether to apply these options based on the expected execution environment, for example, how heavy the memory traffic may be. This allows you to get the fast speed of a car when the traffic is light and the benefit of carporting or sharing a bus to reduce the traffic jam when the traffic is heavy. And this is a unique feature in the OpenC4 compilers. We encourage you to try our new dash MSO option in our upcoming release. Since Open64 is an open source compiler, does AMD get involved in any Open64 related community effort? Yes. In addition to AMD, uh, there are many other companies which deliver compilers based on various forms of OpenC4 technology. Uh, HP, SD Microelectronics, NVIDIA, Pascal, Epsoft, to name a few. There are also many university research groups around the world using OpenC4 for various uh, compiler and computer architecture research. Many of the industrial and university parties have joined an open source community based on OpenC4.net. Wow, that's excellent. That's a, that's a lot of community members. And how do they all work together? Various Open64 developers exchange technical information and development experiences at the mailing list. There's also a source code repository at OpenC4.net. People can follow steps to download compilers and the source code and make contributions. Uh, what has AMD contributed to the community? AMD has merged its changes in the Open64 compiler that it released into the open source uh, repository at OpenC4.net. All the industrial and academic community members can benefit from that. And how does the community coordinate among members? This Open64 student group, which I serve on uh, along with uh, 10 other members from industry and academia. This is a policy-making body of OpenC4.net. We are rolling out policies and processes to allow collaboration, joint developments, and information sharing among community members. So please browse the OpenC4.net website if you are interested in the community efforts. Hi, my name is Michael Lai and I'm a software engineer on AMD's Open64 compiler team. I've been working on compilers for many years now, mainly in the area of optimization. So today I want to talk about some of the optimizations available in the Open64 compiler. Now the basic function of a compiler is simply to compile a user source program and then eventually link it into an executable file so that he or she can run it on the system. Now to many users this is indeed enough, but there are many users, also a lot of users out there, who are very keen on how fast the programs run. Now these performance users require not only that the programs run correctly, but also that they run very fast. So this is where compiler optimizations come in. Available in the Open64 compiler is a large collection of optimizations um, ranging from the basic traditional scalar type optimizations to some very specific ones such as profile guided feedback optimizations um, to some very aggressive, many aggressive state-of-the-art optimizations that only recently appear in the publications. 
the default optimization level, that is even if you don't specify any optimization level on your compilation command line, is O2. At this level, you, you already get a very solid set of basic traditional safe optimizations. They include the familiar scalar optimizations such as constant propagation, where you actually can uh, replace your variables by constant values if you know them. Um, or deco elimination, where the, where the compiler can identify all the parts of the program that are simply not needed and can be deleted. In fact, the compiler can even do better than that. There's a class of optimizations called redundancy elimination, where the compiler can identify all the parts of the program that are redundant and you can move or delete them. So again, the optimizations I just mentioned and many others occur at the default or O2 level. Another set of optimization called loop nest optimization, or LNO for short, occurs at O3. O3 turns on LNO, which specializes in analyzing iterative constructs called loops in, your, in the program. Now, LNO can be especially effective on scientific and compute intensive type programs. These optimizations can even restructure the entire loops, often to take advantage of the many levels of cache hierarchy available in the processor. Included with LNO are other important optimizations such as factorization and software prefetching, where the compiler may take advantage of the benefits of some special machine instructions. In the case of factorization, special SIMD instructions may be generated to replace many equivalent scalar, uh, scalar instructions. And in the case of software prefetching, the compiler can use the hardware prefetch instruction to, to fetch the required data from memory right before it is used by other instructions, eliminating the need to wait for the data, which sometimes can take a very long time. Another class of optimization called Interprocedural Analysis, or IPA for short, can also be very important. IPA is a framework that allows the compiler to gather information from many functions across many different files so that it can make some very intelligent optimization decisions. For example, with this interprocedural knowledge, we can perform more effective uh, function inlining, we can propagate constants more deeply into functions and do more precise alias analysis. Another aggressive optimization that IPA allows us to do is structure relayout optimization. Sometimes with IPA, a compiler can find out all the uses of, say, a particular structure in the program and may decide to relay out the members of this structure in such a way that, you know, can achieve much better cache utilization. This kind of optimization requires knowledge way beyond just a single function residing in one single file, and this global knowledge is what IPA can provide. The last optimization I want to talk about is a feature which is added a few months ago in our 4.2.2 release, uh, and that is the support for huge pages. Traditionally, the size of a page is 4K, but with many applications nowadays with large dataset size, 4K is simply not enough. The next step up is 2 meg, and that is the huge page support we've added. This will take full advantage of the increased number of 2 meg TLB entries that, are, that the AMD processors have. The compilation flag to turn on huge pages is dash HP, and I would encourage perform, performance users to try it out, especially if your applications deal with very large data sets. There are many, many other optimizations that we don't have time to discuss here. Optimizations such as profile-guided feedback-directed optimization, or many code-generated specific type optimizations. In summary, there are a lot of optimizations available in the Open64 compiler. Detailed descriptions of these optimizations can be found in the compiler user's guide. In addition to that, there are also many knowledge-based articles written about some of these optimizations in developer.amd.com. Please let us know what you think. I hope you find this introduction useful. Thank you for watching.